Hello and welcome and welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. When I was a kid I used to wait here on Mersey Square just in front of the Plaza Cinema um, with my mum and we were waiting for the 71 operated by Northwestern, the Northwest, uh, the Northwest Road Car Company. Sometimes we'd get the 30, that was operated by Stockport Corporation uh, from the other side of Mersey Square. It was a bit difficult in those days because the buses just parked in the square, there were no shelters. There was a, a kind of building with a slopey roof and steps up to it, but it didn't really provide proper shelter. But today, things are different because the transport interchange is open. In fact, I was on the very first bus to arrive at and depart from the interchange. And which bus was that? We'll find out later. It's 5.27am on the 17th of March 2024, St. Patrick's Day, as we enter the new interchange from Mersey Square. The doors open in front of us and immediately there's the smell of plaster that hasn't dried completely. Inside it's plush, modern, pristine. There's a line in the middle to provide orientation and we go through this tunnel. It looks so new and clean. This could be the tunnel used by astronauts on the way to the spaceship at NASA. But actually we're passing under a viaduct that was built in the 1820s, carrying one of England's great highways above our heads, the A6, used by the 192 bus, which is reported to be the busiest route in the UK. The plan of the interchange looks organic. Is that a black and white whale? As we enter the main concourse, it's clean, spacious, bright and so wonderfully new. It won't look like this forever. Walking outside, we can see those massive windows. We'll return when it's daylight, but right now, the light pours out from the inside. It's like the Chateau de Versailles, but more modern and curvier. There are the steps going up to the upper level, the level of the park, but the park is not open yet. It will open tomorrow, on Monday, the 18th of March. The stands curve gracefully along the concourse. They are labelled with letters. The poster says, Welcome to Stockport Interchange. At this time of the morning, you'll have to spend 20 pence to get into the toilets, but during the day, they are free to access. On the display, we can see the departures, like at an airport. The next bus after the one I arrived on is at 6.55. It's the 368 to Withinshaw via Cheadle Hume. Soon, railway destinations will be displayed. Maybe they should display plane departures also, thanks to the 199 bus from Buxton that runs along the motorway. The airport is just 15 minutes away. These are all the buses that will operate from the interchange. The 192 is listed, though stop AA is on Wellington Road, some distance away. To access the south part of the oval, where the 199 stops, you go out of the concourse and cross over the vehicle exit road. Under the oval, it's a wide open space, and outside, there goes the 368 to Withinshaw, as displayed on the panel earlier. And the bus in the yellow B network livery is going to operate the 192 service towards Manchester. The interchange exit is overlooked by the venerable Plaza, Super Cinema, and Variety Theatre, which has been there since the early 30s. What changes it has seen over the past nearly 100 years? Later in the morning, I return, and the viaduct looks magnificent through the those huge windows. People are starting to get to know the interchange now, and I can confirm that the entrance is sufficiently high to allow buses to enter, unlike the Arndale bus station in 1980, whose opening was delayed by a number of months as the original design didn't allow enough clearance for double-decker buses. There are lifts to the upper level. I like the use of wood on the ceiling and on the side of the units housing the information centre and ticket office. Inside, it's bright and cheerful, with those huge windows on both sides. Here are the stands with the buses, the new B network livery on the left, the old stagecoach livery on the right. That's the 203 heading into Manchester via Radish and Bellevue. Buses on this side of the oval reverse, a bit like planes, but under their own power, and then make their way out either via the north or the south exit. That's the 384 circular route through Romilly, then Marple. Now let's return to my favourite viewpoint and turn the clock back to see it as it was. We will have a look at a selection of my photos and video clips of the old bus station and the interchange construction site, taken over a period of three years. As stated on a plaque in the old bus station, it opened on the 2nd of March 1981. Forty summers later, the old bus station was in its final months. It consisted of six long bus shelters. It was rather bleak at night as the wind whistled through those shelters and at the far end of the station it didn't always feel 100% safe. But it had served the town, leaving many memories.
There was heavy snow on the 10th of April and bright sunshine the next day. Buses are still arriving and departing, including the 199 that always seem to appear from somewhere. It's one of my favourite services with those distinctive bright red single-decker buses. There's the 25, this one a Scottport school service, and the 382 to Woodley, one of the low-emission buses operated by the now-defunct Little Gem Bus Company. The old bus station closed on the 29th of August 2021. On the 31st of October, the site had been fenced off. The bus shelters were standing ghost-like for a number of weeks. We can enjoy our final pre-construction glimpses of the railway viaduct. By February 2022, the site was a field of mud and puddles. It seemed unlikely that anything solid could ever arise from this mess, but arise it did. First, we saw one of the two concrete cores of the residential building. We could still enjoy the uninterrupted view of the rest of the viaduct, but that would not be for much longer. By August 2022, the second concrete core had joined the first, both parts of the residential building that would rise out of the base of the transport interchange. More and more of the structures started to appear, and the lower floors began to take shape. By April 2022, something resembling a building was beginning to emerge, like one of my Lego brick constructions, a complex amalgam of concrete, steel and other materials. Soon, the exterior was visible, rather beige, recalling that other bus station in the Arndale Centre that never reopened after the 1996 bomb. At least this is a lighter shade of beige. The new residential building was already making its presence felt in the town centre, and from my favourite vantage point we could see work was proceeding well. That house on Wellington Road South will hopefully be brought back to life. The River Mersey and the residential building are getting much closer to completion now, but we still can't see the final colours. The buses use the road next to the sites to exit the bus depot. On the evening of Friday the 10th of March 2023, the pedestrian bridge was lifted into place. It will carry pedestrians, cyclists and anyone on wheels, except road vehicles, between the bus station and the railway station. At this point, I'm including some improvised voiceover that I didn't use in the videos, published here for the first time. And we can go around here, we can see the taller building next to the viaduct. So in front of us is the rear of the bus interchange. It will be accessible by the bridge on the left. There's a lot of noise around here. Interesting design and then the tall residential building just behind. There it is, the River Mersey wending its way westward. Actually, I think I'll stick to scripted voiceovers. The neighbouring residential tower, part of the Weir Mill project, has now risen up to the level of the viaduct. The area in front is still a field of mud, but the visualisations remind us of what is to come in just less than a year. It's September 2023 and the Weir Mill residential building has now completely hidden one whole arch and towers high above the Grade 2 listed viaduct, the first to do so in its 183 year history. And there's the spiral ramp that links ground level with the rooftop park. In February 2024, the Stockport interchange sign appeared. We knew that completion was very close. A long freight train crosses the viaduct. The future has nearly arrived. Here they are laying down some nice stonework, some sets, next to the Mersey Square bus exit. It's only three weeks until the opening of the bridge and it looks like there's still a huge amount of work to do. The pavement is still blocked but from my favourite vantage point it's looking more and more like a finished interchange. So let's now take a look at the footpath and park on their first day of opening, Monday the 18th of March. It's turned out exactly as expected. The footpath snakes down from the station leading past the oval opening. I walk down to check the journey time. It's just under five minutes at a brisk pace. From the station entrance to the entrance at the pavilion next to the park. Looking down at the buses, arriving and departing, they appear almost like toys. We proceed to the oval shaped entrance in the corner of the park leading down into the interchange. From inside, the park looks inviting. It's nice to walk along the footpath, bikes on the left, pedestrians on the right. The name of the park is Viaduct Park. We have this fabulous new view of the viaduct. <sighs> yeah, I heard other people complaining about that building too. Let's focus instead on some of the flora in the park. The gardens are pristine, but they'll need some taking care of. I think more security guards are needed. I notice some antisocial behaviour. I love the two entrances from Wellington Road. Nice stonework on the gates. Looking towards the west, the viaduct is an iconic presence. Let's just reimagine it. We'll finish with some aerial views, courtesy of Cinemaker. I think the interchange park and link are excellent, and I'll be using them most days. The 41 different bus services serve Stockport and beyond, and before too long, the tram will be arriving. Keep watching Ed Nine Witness. 
Stockport is fantastically well connected. By train, eight minutes to Manchester, an hour to Liverpool, Sheffield about three quarters of an hour, two hours to London. The M60 runs right through the town centre, just a stone's throw from the interchange. I think there should be more long distance coach services from Megabus, National Express and Flixbus. Thanks to the High Peak 199 bus, the UK's third busiest airport, Manchester Ringway, is just 15 minutes away. We can see the planes flying directly overhead all the time. The interchange is on the Transpennine Trail, and I'll be using my bike as well. So I'm very happy to capture for posterity a happy and historic milestone, the opening of Stockport's Transport Interchange, Rooftop Park and Railway Station Link. Oh, and one other thing, my dad would have liked it. He liked to ride the bus. And like I said, I was on the very first service to arrive and depart from the interchange. A transport for going to Manchester official got on at the stop before and guided the driver into and around the interchange to the stop where officials and photographers were waiting. It arrived at about 20 past four. It was the 199 from Buxton to Manchester Airport, the one with the friendly drivers, and this one was making the most of the occasion with lots of humorous comments. I stayed on so I could be on the very first departure from the interchange and came back from the airport on the return journey. So if you found this video informative, please like and subscribe. And if you have any opinions or insider information to share, you can post a comment. Please be courteous. With YouTube channels, time is of the essence, especially mine. So if you can help me to reach my goals more quickly, please tell a few people about my channel and consider donating via www.buymeacoffee.com slash Eyewitness. Link below. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen im Stockport Interchange.